Two minutes. Okay, can we have our seats? I'll say that. We're going to start in 30 seconds. Okay, I'd like to call the Winter Flounder Board to order. Uh, if those in the back could take the discussions outside, it would be helpful. First order of business is approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Seeing none, uh, agenda is adopted by consent. Tom, did you have? I just wanted to thank the new chairman for having two screens, because now at least New Jersey can see what's up on the thing the first time in, in probably about 15 years, because usually it's on that screen, and now the feds can actually see what's going on. <laughs> so I think it's a, <laughs> it's a, a great addition, and, and Lewis and I talked about it. We tried to see, figure out how to rearrange the seats, so I'd like to thank the chairman for basically putting up this, and the commissioner for putting two screens so we can see what's going on. Uh, thanks, Tom. I'd certainly like to take credit for that, but uh, that'll have to go to staff. Yeah, staff figured that out, so uh, we, we all thank staff. Uh, any other? Uh, um, well, we've passed the uh, agenda, unless uh, someone had some, a late item. Uh, Dave? Just a clarification, Mr. Chairman. This uh, meeting is only 45 minutes long. God bless. Godspeed. Uh, that might be up to you some. Uh, next order of business, uh, approval of the proceedings of the May 2013 meeting. Any changes or additions uh, to the minutes? Seeing none, uh, minutes pass <coughs> as written. Public comment, uh, is there any public comment on items that are not on the agenda? Seeing none. Uh, we're going to move on to item number four, Melissa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will now go over the FMP review for the 2012 fishing season for winter flounder, uh, which spans from May 2012 through April 2013. So first is an update of the fisheries. Uh, this graph, next slide please, uh, shows the commercial and recreational landings in the Gulf of Maine since 1982. So landings have generally declined. Um, in the commercial fishery, uh, 2010 had the lowest landings on record, which just over 308,000 pounds, which is roughly 5% of the historical peak landings in 1982. Um, in 2011 and 2012, commercial landings have increased to 532,000 and 685,000 pounds, respectively. Uh, this is due to the federal emergency action that raised the Gulf of Maine ACL, to which we responded with um, increased trip limits for non-federal vessels. Recreational landings have also declined through the time series. For example, in 2012, uh, the Gulf of Maine landings were less than 50,000 pounds. So um, now we have the southern New England uh, mid-Atlantic winter flounder landings. Uh, similar trends to the Gulf of Maine, uh, general decline through the time series as well. In 2011, uh, commercial landings dropped to a record low of 135,000 pounds, which is less than 1% of the peak landings just three decades ago. Um, landings increased slightly in 2012, uh, just over 152,000 pounds. Um, so the moratorium was in place um, from 2009 on, so at that time, 80% of the catch was discarded. Recreational landings also reached an all-time low in 2012, with anglers taking less than 60,000 pounds of winter flounder. So now we'll go over the management measures and state compliance reports. Uh, Amendment 1 through Addendum 2 apply to the 2012 fishing year. Addendum 3 was implemented for the 2013 fishing year. 
So these are the commercial ma management measures that must be implemented for the Gulf of Maine for the 2012 fishing year. Um, as you can see, the 500 pound limit um, that was put in place. The plan review team found that all states had management measure, measures and programs consistent with the FMP requirements. In the southern New England, these are the commercial management measures. Again, the plan review team found all states had consistent regulations with FMP. So all states had recreational measures in the Gulf of Maine and southern New England that is consistent with the FMP requirements. So the when, intro winter flounder FMP also has state-specific requirements for monitoring and research for some states uh, for the development of recruitment and spawning stop biomass indices. Um, again, all states were consistent with the requirements. Delaware was granted de, minim de minimis status in 2012, so it was exempted from the juvenile survey requirement. And then lastly, um, uh, Delaware once again uh, requests de minimis status. Um, the P PDT found that they have met all three requirements. Um, uh, they have 0% three-year average landings for commercial and recreational sectors, so they qualified um, for de minimis status. So this concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Melissa. Good report. Um, <clears throat> if we continue uh, with the 2014 specifications with no changes, would uh, we need a motion for Delaware to uh, be de minimis again, or would that just continue on, Tony? We would need a motion to approve the FMP review as well as to approve um, Delaware with de minimis status. Pat? Thank I'm you. sorry. Hold on, Pat. I think there's a, a question, Bill. Yes, thank you. Um, on page 20, under the recreational harvest A plus B1 by weight, pounds, is this correct that New Jersey had 40 pounds? Is that it? Yes, um, that is correct. Um, the recreational landings dropped by more than 99%. And secondly, uh, I just wanted to, to, to know, note that uh, why does anybody know why did the feds raise if it was overfished why did they raise the uh, the trip allowance that we did too uh, what was the reason why we did that oh they did that are you asking for gulf of maine i believe um it was to provide more fishing opportunities because um ground fish overall are pretty hammered um for example with cod, there were severe cuts, so um, they wanted to provide more fishing opportunity for fishermen. Well, uh, if I may, um, is it not overfished anymore? For Gulf of Maine, um, the last stock assessment, um, the model was not accepted, so it was determined that overfishing was not occurring, but the stock status itself was not known. Pat, uh, oh, another question, uh, Dave. Thanks. Yeah, um, a comment on the review. It's uh, it's great. There were a couple of things um, I wanted to point out. The in the recreational fishery uh, for Southern New England, anyway, we should uh, include the 60-day um, limit on an open season for current regulations. I, I didn't see that in there. That's on page 12. And then uh, just uh, generally under each states. Um, description of, of their uh, fisheries and indices. Uh, there's a general statement about uh, how each agency monitors the recreational and commercial fisheries and, um, you know, for example, Connecticut, it says NOAA, we monitor commercial fisheries through NOAA port sampling, which isn't quite on, so we might want to revisit the technical committees and get more accurate descriptions there. Uh, true of most of the states. That, that was as reported in the state compliance reports, but I will ask the TC members to review. Thank you. Any other questions? Dave. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not, not necessarily a question, but having not attended the last board, I, was, I read through the minutes and I was struck by the number and amount of discussion there was about this issue that Bill Adler just raised, which is what was the justification in federal waters for raising the trip limit? And uh, I, I really uh, went away from that whole read with a really bad taste in my mouth uh, because of, other than a, a statement that Mark Gibson made about increasing abundance in Rhode Island waters, uh, there was no positive comments. I, I went through the, the documents uh, and there are about 12 or 15 negative uh, issues that relate to winter flounder. And, I, I, and the council obviously took its, its position for reasons. And I, I think that it would be really useful so the record is clear for the commission to simply ask the council to uh, send us a letter and articulate what those reasons are so that, the, that we'll have a clear record of why they did it and we can answer some of the 272 questions that Pat Augustine uh, raised. Thank you, David. Uh, Tom? Not only Pat Augustine, but my concern I mean, here I am, I basically, because I made the motion a couple of years ago to basically restrict the catch of winter flounder to recreationally two fish, and even the commercial pound net fishermen in New Jersey are limited to 50 pounds, which works out to 36 fish, and yet we're basically increasing the fishery, and they're looking at me and say, what are you doing? It's, you know, it's the same thing happened with weak fish when we basically did a, a lot for a 100-pound bycatch, and now states have a 1,000-pound bycatch, and we're still at a 100-pound bycatch, so it's... it's it, it gets us in all kinds of uh, trouble here, and I wasn't happy, and I, I'm still not happy, and I still haven't found that it was justified in my mind that we allowed for this increase while we're still being very restrictive on some, some of the sectors of the fishery. You know, these fishermen that fish pound nets are basically restricted to the rivers. They don't have a boat, so they can't take any availability of the stocks of the guys that go out and, and drag for them. So uh, it's very unfair. And you, you try to explain it to them, and I can't right now justifiably explain why we did it. So that's a real problem. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, I think we're kind of getting into the next agenda item. So <clears throat> I, I think at this point uh, a motion might be in order. Pat? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Melissa, that was a great report. Thank you very much. Uh, I move that the board approve uh, 2013 FMP review and state compliance reports and Delaware's request for a de minimis status for commercial and recreational fisheries. Is there a second? Tom Fody. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, uh, need to caucus. Seeing none, a uh, show of right hands for those in favor. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> Same sign as opposed. Null votes. The minimus motion carries unanimous. Okay, next agenda item is consider uh, specifications for 2014. Um, I think uh, you want to have a comment prior to the presentation on that? The AP had a uh, phone conference that uh, I listened into. And uh, uh, the AP chair, Bud, is here, and uh, we'd like to hear the outcome of that meeting. Thank you, Bud. Okay, we had a uh, conference call. We had advisors to participate from New York, Rhode Island, New Hampshire, and Maine. Subsequent to the call, uh, a adv recreational advisor from New Jersey also participated and, uh, and voted on our, our discussions. Uh, like I just heard from, from Bill about uh, the increase of the trip limit. We, we had a f several frustrations that we discussed. The first one was the stock assessment for the Gulf of Maine, which continues. This is my 21st year of attempting to have something done about winter flounder in the Gulf of Maine. Nothing has changed in 21 years. And uh, 
we continue to be frustrated that uh, the landings data are such that, you know, essentially in the state of Maine, we only have a, a recreational catch at either end of the state with nothing in the middle. This year I personally saw two winter flounder. I saw one being eaten by a loon out my office window of my house, and, and I found a dead one at Southport when I was doing a biological inventory for a dredge project. Uh, essentially, the advisory panel has recommended that uh, there be a moratorium on all winter flounder landings. And we talked about the EEZ, and the fact that in, in southern New England, the uh, ACL had been over 60% caught. And I did a spreadsheet calculation when we were having the, the conference call. And it turns out with a 50-pound trip limit for southern New England stock inshore, that the, and with the inshore offshore movements of winter flounder that we understand to be the case, that it would be day in, day out, uh, 150 trips in inshore waters, uh, 24, 7, 365 a year. So anything that's done in state waters has, is, is a de minimis uh, management activity because it's all easily overridden by what happens in the EEZ. And we just feel that uh, there is no way that allowing landings from the, fa in, from the EEZ is not going to negatively impact state waters. And when you look at those landings data, it's pretty clear that things have been in the tank for a really long time, and I think that we need to take some measures. I, actually the advisory panel, we voted unanimously again uh, that we need more and more restrictions to try to do something about winter flounder. This has been going on forever. Uh, in my experience, it's been well, it's been almost 40 years since they kind of disappeared from my area, and I lived in a hotbed of winter flounder. And I think that, uh, that covers it. Thank you, Bud. To, uh, just to clarify um, uh, what the AP recommendation is, uh, moratorium would mean there would be no possession or landings of winter flounder uh, within a state. And I, I think that's the intent that the AP is recommending from what I heard. Uh, any questions, Pat? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, appreciate that report. I just wondered when some group was going to say something. We say it around the table that there's definitely a problem. The advisory panel has now stated it uh, very large in black and white. I, my question would be, what would possibly be a step that either we could take as a board or the um, technical committee, we could um, have the technical committee look at to do something to start an action to address the problem. I think the issue is now, as I see it, we've got the, the increase in daily quota, which I've said all of us, it's like, this is unbelievable. Um, and at the same time, we kind of went along with that. Uh, but now we're in this dilemma. And we have an advisory panel on the record that has said this is a major problem. So I guess I'll go back to my basic question. Is there a step that we as a board can take to either want to empower the staff with a technical committee to take a different look, to come up with a recommendation as to what we possibly can do to address this? Moratorium may be too severe, but it's, it's an option. Mr. Chairman, do you have any idea which way we might go with this? Or? I'd be looking for your leadership. Pat, in that regard. No, I'm, a, I'm a short timer, Mr. Chairman, so I, uh, I'm not sure I can give you too much leadership in the next couple of days. Uh, but I think some other board members might have some ideas. Tom has been very vocal on this, and Tom, you might want to uh, pro offer some advice. Uh, and I like what the advisory panel came up with, but again, it's taken that initial step because it's going to hurt some people who are um, using those animals to land for economic purposes and in some cases maybe it's keeping them afloat as businessmen but at the end of the day we're still charged with the status of that stock and it sure has not improved so I'll just leave it at that Mr. Chairman hopefully someone else will add something to the comments. Thank you Pat. I have Mark next and then Tom. Thanks. I'm looking at the advisory panel recommendations and Point C says the moratorium should include a prohibition on possession winter flounder in state waters, but the activities in federal waters do not adversely affect states' efforts to restore winter flounder stock. So it's the intent of the advisors that we would have a prohibition on 
possession uh, in all state waters so that federal fishers could not land could not land fish. That's just so I understand what you're recommending. Thank you. Tom. Yeah, I'm, I'm as frustrated as Pat and Bud is. I mean, I, I, we looked at a fishery that we were hoping we would rebuild. I think there's some environmental conditions in the in the bays and estuaries that affect winter flounder. Uh, I mean, I know it affects dredging. I mean, I've, I got more complaints on people that wanted to dredge in Cape May and say we don't have any winter flounder because of winter flounder spawning. It might take place that they can't dredge, and the only time they can dredge is summertime when you can't dredge. So it's a, it's a very complicated issue. I, when I look at this, and I said they say New England allowed this because of yellowtail and, or the ground fish fishery not being what it is. Well, if you look at the pound net fishermen in New Jersey or any place else, they can't catch river herring anymore. They can't catch shad anymore. They can't catch what? What the flower is one of the few species they were allowed to catch, and now we've taken that with. It's not really really a viable fish for them. Um, I don't know if I'd go for a moratorium right now as far as all landings. I mean, that would be, that'd be difficult on the guys that are not really catching anything to begin with and not really a small part of the problem. I could go to that you could not land more than 50 pounds of fish in a state, and that would basically take care of the problem because that would basically say, you know, let the poor pound that has been in existence is the only fish he can catch. He can't go after yellowtail. He can't go after codfish because that's not what he's going to catch in a pound net sitting in the bank of a river. But I would restrict all state landings to 50 pounds because that would deal a problem. Now, I know that might not be acceptable to the guys in New England, but it's a, it's a step that we would like in New Jersey or in the right direction. I mean, it's, it's you know... It's a very difficult problem because the stocks have not done any comeback. It's like weak fish. We thought we were going to make a comeback because we put regulations in, in place, and we never saw the comeback that we expected. Thank you, Tom. Uh, I think we've uh, kind of gotten beyond questions for the advisory panel. Um, we do have a report from the technical committee, and I think it might be wise to uh, go to that next. Uh, Katie? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, unfortunately, the technical committee does not have any good news for anybody. Um, basically, the the indices are continue to remain flat and low for all um, for all regions and all all states. Everything we've looked at has uh, had a pretty pessimistic uh, outlook. I'll just go through these very quickly since I know we're pressed for time. Um, these are indices from the Gulf of Maine and New Hampshire. Um, they look flat, maybe a tiny bit of uptick, but I would just like to point out these are actually the shortest um, indices on record. They only go back to 2000. So when you compare this to um, the longer ter time series that we have from, for example, Massachusetts, you can see that. That's basically just uh, the, the bottom of the barrel there. Um, so this is Massachusetts. Um, the Gulf of Maine population is, is not recovering based on the adult indices that we have from these, from these various states. Um, similarly, for southern New England and the Mid-Atlantic, um, these are the adult indices from Massachusetts, and you can see a continuous downward trend there. Um, these are the indices from Rhode Island and Connecticut, which remain low and flat. Um, adult indices from New York and New Jersey, again, are remain low and flat. Um, the juvenile indices, similarly, I think are one point above the average is in Massachusetts there in the top left, um, but everybody else remains, again, for, for recruitment indices, low and flat. Um, so basically, the, the southern New England, Massachusetts population is not recovering based on the adult and juvenile indices that we have um, from the various states in the region. Um, and the, that's, that's basically it. Um, questions for the technical committee, and I uh, try to have it questions just on the report, not getting into where we might go. Pat? Yeah, very clear report, Kate. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, but based on the data that you have up there, you have a conclusion, say it's not recovering, and so on, and so on, and so on. But is there another conclusion that you would end up making a recommendation based on based on the analysis that you presented and what the technical committee came up with? Uh, I think the technical committee would not recommend any less restrictive measures um, for this stock um, at, at, at any point. I mean, I think you know we certainly we certainly would not oppose any more restrictive measures, but we did not try to come up with any kind of management plan or any kind of management options that would reduce or, or maintain the catch in that um, for for these reasons. 
Just a quick follow on, Mr. Chairman. Uh, but hey, you had thought about possibly offering up something that would be more restrictive? Or would you expect something from the board to our chairman to uh, ask the technical committee to look at some options as to what we might do? We would, we would need direction from the board in terms of for that kind of work. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hope we're going that direction. Thank you, Kate. Any other questions specific to the technical committee report? Uh, Mark, uh, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, I guess just a simple question. Other than a slight uptick in the abundance indices for both Massachusetts and Rhode Island, is there other, are there other positive signs that, that you can point to? No. Okay. And then uh, where do we stand in terms of meeting our rebuilding objective? So I believe there would be a new stock assessment in 2016, but based on the most recent stock assessment that was completed in 2012, in southern New England, um, the biomass is only 16% of the target. Um, and again, in Gulf of Maine, the model was not accepted, so that is unknown. Mark? I didn't see that the... Um long-term um, spring trawl survey index for Rhode Island was examined in the same way that it was for Massachusetts. I think it's um, conflated with the juvenile indices in one of your graphs, and I would just suggest that that's, uh, and it only starts in 1999, so it doesn't provide any context, nor does the scale allow you to see the increase that's happened since 2009 to 2012. Um, so I think that's a problem with the report, but I'm assuming my staff supplied that information, so I have to go back and get some splaining back home, I guess. But um, <clears throat> to, uh, part of David's question is there is other information, which I cited, I think, at the last time we had a board meeting, and that is the expansion of the size composition uh, in our trawl survey in the last few years, which would be in perfect agreement with the SARC 52 findings that F was down to 0.05. Uh, if that's the case, then simply been first principles that fish are dying as fast as they're living longer, so you're going to get uh, more bigger ones. So I think there is, I don't think this treatment was, um, was complete in terms of, uh, status, of the, uh, status of the resource. I'm pleased the technical committee didn't make any recommendations based on it. Thank you. Any other questions? Roy? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Did the technical committee consider Katie, whether a, a moratorium on landings would help the stock recover? No, we didn't do any kind of analysis like that. Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, um, Melissa will run through uh, the 2013 specifications uh, so we can see if uh, there are any motions to change for 2014. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so first, um, just a brief update on what the council side is doing. So they have uh, submitted a draft framework 51 with the uh, specifications for Gulf of Maine and Southern New England. Um, in 2014, Gulf of Maine is 1,040 total ACL with the state water subcomponent, 272 metric tons, um, which is the same as it has been for 2013. And in southern New England, um, again, those are the same as uh, the 2013 specifications, 1,612 metric tons, 235 metric tons in the state water. And so um, for today, um, for the board's consideration, the com commercial measures, measures that could be adjusted through board action are trip limits, size limits, and seasons. The recreational measures, size limits, bag limits, and seasons. So, and if you guys need a, um, a reminder on what the current uh, measures are, um, in Gulf of Maine, it's 500 pounds trip limit for non-federal federal permits, 12-inch size limit. Um, for gear, uh, there's a minimum six six and a half inch square diamond mesh in the cod end, uh, and states have to maintain seasonal closures, which vary. 
In southern New England, uh, it's 50 pound or 38 fish, uh, which is basically the bycatch amount. Uh, 12 inch size limit, six and a half uh, square diamond mesh cut end. And then recreational is uh, 12 inch size limit again across the board. Um, in the Gulf of Maine, it's an eight fish uh, creole limit, and then in southern New England, two fish. With a 60 day open season and 20 days closed during May, March and April. Thank you. Uh, any questions for Melissa? Okay. Any proposed changes t for the 2014 specification year? David. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, while I, while I agree with a lot of the comments that have been made about, um, you know, the propriety of, of um, the National Marine Fisheries Service increasing harvest on southern New England winter flounder, uh, the fact is that, that they have, uh, so it's really changed the dynamic between federal and state waters and, and, uh, and in particular uh, made it very difficult to explain why on the recreational side we have a 60-day open season at two fish and uh, no such seasonal restrictions on, on the commercial fishery, um, even, at, even at 50 pounds in state waters. Um, we're, we're looking at over 99% of the harvest uh, coming from commercial uh, fisheries. Um, you know, on a state-by-state -state basis, 97% of the landings come from one state. Um, as Mark indicated and, and others, I think we have seen a little bit of an uptick in, Long Island, in our Long Island Sound Troll Survey, but nothing to terribly get excited about. However, um, I, I think just for, for common sense purposes, um, I would like to see um, us relax the open season for winter flounder and, and um, to that point, since they, we only landed 6.7 metric tons in 2012, the last year that was available, uh, and we've landed six, seven, 763 metric tons from federal waters so far this year, um, I, would, I would move to allow uh, at a two fish limit an open season from March 1 to December 31st for the 2014 fishing year in southern New England. Uh, is there a second to that motion? Mark, um, you want to talk to the motion any further, David? Or? Uh, just, uh, just to say that uh, um, I, I think this will be only a very, very incremental, indetectably small increase in harvest, but um, it, it will go a long way to trying to explain a little bit of, of the logic behind uh, the winter flounder management in, in southern New England, uh, the idea that you know, we, would, we would only allow 60 days of open fishing in, uh, for recreational fishermen and have this major change in commercial fisheries, I, I think is just hard to explain, and, and I'd like to rectify it to that very small degree. Um, any comments, questions? <clears throat> Mark? Yes, uh, thank you. I agree with Dave's um, Dave's arguments, and um, I would also add again that you know, the fishing mortality rate is extremely low now, as of the last. In fact, hard to believe uh, that low, but nonetheless, uh, fishing mortality rates have plunged after the uh, federal closure. And I think my comments at the last board meeting are uh, very understandable in the um, minutes as to why the council did what it did with a revised rebuilding schedule and a desire to turn. Uh, dead discarded fish into a uh, landed fish of some value. Um, I think all those rationales still stand and I think we do need to try to address this parity issues that came up we, we heard very loudly about uh, back home and I would ask Dave if he would willing to consider a friendly amendment that would increase the commercial possession limit from 50 to 100 <clears throat> in companion. Dave? Um, uh, I understand the logic. I'd, I'd prefer to take it up separately. Um, I'd prefer to just deal with the recreational now and then, and then deal with commercial. I, I understand where Mark's coming from, and believe me, we've heard the same thing from our uh, commercial guys. Mark, is that okay with you to, to do it separately? Uh, that's fine, as long as I have an opportunity to make that motion. You will. Tom? Yeah, I think one of the reasons I would support this motion is 
when Winter Flower starts doing it, it gets traffic into the tackle stores, the bait shops, the, the rowboats and things like that. Even though they don't catch a lot of fish, it's the opportunity in its business. And one of the things we look about is the economy that's hurt the recreational fishing industry, especially in New York and New Jersey after uh, Sandy. And anything that would be helpful could do that. And when you look at the numbers and you look at the comparison of the numbers, I can't see any justification for not doing it. I mean, it's not my first choice. My first choice would be pull back the trip limits in federal waters. But if you're going to allow this and we can't stop it, and it would be hypocritical for us to basically do something that drastic, in our own waters when we do it. You know, it's interesting. The feds always basically say we have to adhere to what we're, they're doing. Otherwise, they'll shut the fishery down. But we don't have the opportunity to do the same thing in federal waters. We can't vote and go to the Secretary of Commerce and say that we don't support what NIMS is doing and basically need to shut the fishery down in federal waters. So since we don't have that option, I have to support this motion. Any other comments on the motion? David. Hmm. Yeah, extending the season for a longer period of time does make sense in light of the fact that the commercial fishery is, well, it can be argued, not very well constrained, especially through sector vessels and how sector vessels operate with no trip limits or possession limits. Um, common pool vessels, of course, are restricted to uh, specific limits, but not the sector limits. Sector vessels, they're restricted by specific uh, sector allocations based on the cumulative uh, history. Um, share of the quota by vessels within the sector. So it's awful hard to say to individual, uh, to say to recreational fishermen that you can't fish, take two fish during uh, other months when the commercial fishery is free to take uh, rather large amounts of a resource that, that indeed um, is not showing any signs of recovery from the information I see in front of me. So I can support the motion. Uh, increasing the bag, uh, even though it's um, it's inviting to do that. I think um, that would um, that would be a bit too far to go. Extending the season makes a great deal of sense. Any other comments, Doug? <laughs> Obviously, uh, uh, this is a difficult decision. You know, I certainly uh, understand the southern New England states uh, seeing the 5,000 pound trip limit that was implemented on on common pool vessels uh, while their recreational fishery is extremely constrained already and we don't see that much response uh, from these extremely <coughs> restrictive restrictions we already have in here. Uh, I'll, I'll make a point that probably many people on the council realize that that trip limit was uh, reduced uh, later in the year to, I believe it was 300 pounds because they were concerned about um, uh, that 1% of the fishery, the common pool, going over. Um, I, given what I've seen from the technical committee there, I'm, I'm, I'm having some uh, discomfort with trying to relax regulations when we're not seeing... Uh, uh, that much response from our very restrictive regulations, and so I'm, um, I'm just going to make the point that I'm having. I'm, we may, depending on my discussion with my chairman, uh, oppose it or maybe abstain from this. Any other comments? Um, I guess I'd like to add a comment to um, what Doug just said. Um, <clears throat> clearly, uh, it, it is an issue of fairness. Uh, but it's also pretty hard to increase mortality on a stock that is in this kind of condition. Um, so I guess I will have to uh, caucus with my fellow commissioner because I'm not sure I can support it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Pat? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I've been kind of reluctant to raise my hand on this one because it is a fairness issue again. Um, however, um, I do think we have to do more than allow the 60 days, but again, to go from March 1st to December 31st, I'm having difficulty with that. Um, in our waters, I'm looking at what other species of fish are there. Uh, after March, we get March, April, we get into, you have blackfish at the time. In May, June, you're getting into uh, summer flounder's cough and black sea bass. We got striped bass in April 15th. You've got bluefish in the waters at the same time. The question is, do we really need to have it open 
while those other five species are open in our waters, and I can't speak for the whole coast, um, but it just seemed like a very long period of time. Um, if that's the best we can do, um, we'll go with it, but I would, I'd be more inclined to drop that December back um, some, some period of time and look at what we're fishing for up and down the coast during the fall months from September on. Uh, what else is in the water after summer flounder, September 30th? Uh, black sea bass, you still got scup around, goes to de December 31st. Still have striped bass, still have bluefish. And then the question comes into play, when do the winter flounder spawn? And if it's primarily in the winter months, uh, January, February in there, um, I'm not sure there's any spawning going on in October, November. December, I'd almost be inclined to curtail it and move it back to uh, uh, somewhere around the September 30 date. And uh, if I can get any support for that, um, I would go for an uh, amendment to it. But I'd like to hear from Mr. Miller and some other folks to see what their options are. It just seems to go from 60 days to extend this long in a stock that's basically depleted. And, and according to Kate, uh, uh, there does not seem to be any blip in sight. Along the way, it's it's pretty hard to to be very conservative on one hand and concerned about a stock that's in deep doo doo, and then turn around and say, well, what's, in all fairness, let's do this. So that's where I'm at it. And before we vote on it, Mr. Chairman, if we can't get, I can't get any support for it, I'll make a motion to amend to September 30. I have Tom, uh, then David Pearson, then Roy. A point of information, what's a flound that doesn't exist in the bays and the estuaries where the people catch them, and that's where the fishery is directed in most of those months. They're only there at two periods of time. Even though you're opening up for the full year, you're really only looking at a couple of months in the spring and a couple of months in the, in the fall. So even though we make it year-round, it's not going to be year-round. And the people that do fish, from fish, a lot of them fish from docks and piers because that's available. So those are the species that you were talking about for that period of time. I don't want to get into where I'm dividing dates right now because I know from like May on they're not going to catch winter flounder. Yeah. And, and anything that's caught winter flounder that time of year is in the EZ. And NIMS is taking care of the EZ, so I'm not even getting involved in that one because the winter flounder catches that do occur during that period of time are all in the EZ. Leave it at December 31st. Just leave it the same. There's no big deal about it because you're going to have those closures anyway. There's nobody going to fish after May. For, for when, and they're not going to start fishing again until November, so all the species. Okay, I have Dave next. Yeah, Tom Forty made my point. This is really uh, a doubling of the, of the opportunity for fishing for recreational fish, for recreational fishing in state waters, uh, southern New England, because uh, warmer waters mean that the fish leave the estuaries. They're in deeper water where they're subjected to uh, federal waters, commercial fisheries. So this is really, for all practical purposes, uh, March and April and November and December. Otherwise, they're out in deeper water, federal waters. Roy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Although I certainly understand the rationale um, used by Dave Simpson and Mark Gibson for offering this motion, it seems a little bit like, uh, to me, uh, rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Um, we would like to see this stock recover so that it can re-inhabit the southern portion of its range where it has not been a, a fishable population for many, many years. And I don't see anything that we're considering this morning moving us closer to that ultimate goal. So I'm disappointed, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. Any other, before we do a brief caucus, any other comments? Seeing none of one minute. Okay, we all set. Need a little more time. <clears throat> okay, Joe, you need the uh, motion read? Okay. <clears throat> all right, all those in favor, show of right hands. All those opposed? Six, two. Abstain? Two. Null votes? None. Passes six, two, two, zero. Okay, Mark, did you have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would move that for the commercial specification for fishing year 2014 in the southern New England area, the
commercial possession limit be increased from 50 to 100 pounds? Is there a second to that motion? David Simpson. Discussion on the motion? Dave. I'm sorry, Dave. Let, uh, I'd like to let the maker of the motion speak first. Yeah, so just point out again for the record the uh, extremely low fishing mortality rates that have been assessed in this area. Uh, the rebuilding schedule that has been approved by the New England Council um, under the extended rebuilding schedule and these current uh, allocations. And I don't believe that increasing the commercial possession limit is going to do much to change the uh, landings from the 52 metric tons. We're simply going to move fish from the discarded category to the uh, retained category. And that was the argument that the council used. Uh, and I believe it's a sound one. Um, we can achieve some parity um, at home, and we can also um, move some fish from the discarded category to the landed category and increase revenues for state waters fishermen. So uh, I think it makes uh, sense to me. This is, uh, I'll leave it at that. <clears throat> David Pierce. Yeah, I do not support increasing the, uh, the limit for the commercial fishermen for a couple of reasons. Uh, I mean, Mark's made some good uh, arguments in favor of increasing it, but frankly, you know, I, I do look at the information provided to us from the technical committee report, and I do reflect on what I've been told, what the New England Council has been told regarding the status of these resources for a number of years now. And there, there really is no good reason from a biological sense, from a resource sense, to, uh, to increase the commercial limit. Uh, I should also point out, too, that uh, I think next week uh, the Division of Marine Fisheries is going to our Marine Fisheries Advisory Commission with a recommendation to uh, maintain the 50 fish, uh, 50 pounds. Um, so this, is, this, this is, causes an interesting uh, wrinkle in our, our administrative procedure and the recommendation we're going to make. Um, so it, in, in addition, being a New England Council member and being one of the states that the New England Council has focused on uh, as one of a number of states uh, that has fisheries inside state waters for winter flounder and other ground fish, I know that the attention always has been on us, that is the states, what are you doing to restrict your commercial fisheries, recreational to some extent, but mostly the commercial fisheries because the federal rules, New England Council's, the New England Council ground fish plan, it gives the states a set aside. You know, no, particular, no particular restrictions, just a set aside. In other words, states, you know, be restrictive, please. The request is we can't control you. We're going to assume you're going to take so much. So anything that the states take uh, in our waters by states' waters fishermen uh, comes out of the hide, so to speak, of federal waters fishermen because the New England Council, the federal government, has to account for that amount that is part of a, a set aside for state waters take. So, um, you know, for those two reasons, um, you know, I, I can't support the motion. I prefer to leave the commercial limits uh, in the Gulf of Maine as well as southern New England the same in 2014 as they were last year. Any other comments? Uh, uh, David Simpson. Yeah, I seconded the motion because I thought it made sense to, to talk about this, and it, it is something that I've struggled with. Um, how do we respond to to uh, Noah's decision to radically change the course on on winter flounder? I'm, I remain very concerned about this stock. Uh, we actually have uh, we're in the middle of a proceeding in in Connecticut to uh, prohibit even the 50 pound limit through much of the uh, winter season. Allow it in the summer when we expect the discard mortality would be higher and and there would be no targeting, but. Uh, even at 50 pounds, I worry about uh, targeting, um, and 100, I know they would be targeting. And uh, so reluctantly, I, I, I don't think I'll support it. Um, uh, I think the message the commission is sending in this discussion is, please, feds, cut back on mortality in federal waters. Any other comments? Doug. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I have concerns about this uh, in light of some of the uh, uh, data that was provided by the uh, uh, technical committee uh, on the abundance of, of the winter flounder stock to be relaxing here. And before I could, I, I, Mr. Gibbs, Mr. Gibson's argument that we would be uh, turning discards um, 
into landings, so their mortality that's already, what he's inferring is that there's mortality that's already occurring uh, under this. Um, I would like to see the state level data that's showing that there are um, uh, 50 pounds of discards that are occurring uh, on all trips. So at this point, without that kind of information, I can't support uh, this motion. Okay, any other comments? Mark, respond. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the second uh, bite. I'm not going to argue so much for the motion because I think it's going to fail, but uh, thank David for seconding it so we can get some discussion out here. But I think it points to a problem in our, in our winter flounder management program, uh, and I think I would turn David Pierce's, or not so much his argument, but his observation around that it's true that the New England Council management makes an assumption about what state waters catch, is going to be and then sets their specifications based on that and of course that we now have a process of making specifications uh, our own specifications and they can keep an eye on that and, and adjust theirs as we go through and see what happens with cat i would argue that it would be more appropriate for this uh, commission to have a negotiated um, approach to winter flounder and uh, if there are any other species following this uh, this pattern have a negotiated approach as to what that split ought to be uh, rather than us waiting to see what they assume and then trying to conform our management regulations to stay within that. I think this plan needs to be upgraded to be more of a, uh, a joint uh, plan so that we can get to that point. I think we have a problem now in terms of, um, and I know there are some individuals on the board who are, have commented repeatedly in the past about us just uh, doing what we have to do to support uh, council plans. So I think we need to upgrade our winter flounder management to be more uh, cooperative and uh, the cooperative plan as opposed to us waiting to see what the dog does and how the tail moves. Thank you. Uh, running behind, Tom, do you have something new or can you pass? I really need to say something. The fact that we didn't increase the bag limit on the recreational side, we re remained the same and we basically allowed for a longer season, but the fight neck fishery in our state is basically has the longest season to begin with already. So I'm not sure. It, it's very difficult for me to make a decision on this because of the message we're seeing. Uh, I don't ex, ex, uh, support a joint winter flounder plan just because I see the, the problems we have with summer flounder scub and sea bass. So I'm not in that moving that direction. But there needs to be some more cooperation between the, the New England Council and, and the uh, Atlantic States Marine Fisheries Commission on what's going on with winter flounder. Okay, we're going to um, vote on this uh, 30-second caucus. Need the motion read? Okay. All those in favor, uh, signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, whoops, sorry, so it's two. Okay, New Jersey. Um, all those opposed, same size. Uh, abstentions, null votes, motion fails, 2800. Okay, we're on to other business. Um, Doug, did you have something? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I would like to uh, task the technical committee uh, with um, giving the board a report on what the impact of having a a coastwide moratorium on the landings and possession of winter flounder in state waters jurisdiction would have uh, one on the mortality of of um, fish in, throughout the range, including federal waters, and um, what it what the effect that would have on the ability of this, these three, these two stocks, the uh, Gulf of Maine and, and Southern New England stocks to rebuild. So what I'm looking at is to specifically look at what the technical committee's recommendation, prohibition, all states on um, uh, landings and possession of winter flounder, both recreational and commercial, uh, would be on the stocks, both the fishing mortality rate and uh, the ability of the stocks to rebuild. 
Okay, I don't think. Did you say a motion? Because I think we can just task the technical. That's what I was. I was task. I was going to task unless there's some discussion that would want to be on that at that point. I might make a motion if if there seems to be opposition to this. Uh, is there anybody uh, opposed to this? Uh, Mark, you want to speak? Might be. I need a question. Are you talking about um, just prohibiting state waters fisheries? Are you talking about states implementing possession limits that would eliminate federal waters fisheries? Uh, I think the uh, uh, advisory panels was to have a possession limit that would eliminate uh, uh, federal waters uh, fisheries ability to land. Can I follow up? You may. What would you do about George's Bank? This is what I want to see what the impact would be. Go ahead, I'm opposed then. Um, <clears throat> all right, I guess that we'll, we'll need a motion. Then, Terry, you want to speak to that or wait for the motion? I'll wait for the motion. Okay. Doug, you want to make that in the form of a motion? Would you like me to write it out first, or do we have enough? Uh, I, can, I can sit, I can uh, try and write it and then provide it to them if you'll give me a minute. Do you have I'll wait to comment until it's up there. Uh, I would add is uh, landings and possessions in state um, in state waters. And I think we could even, um, because of Mark's concern there, um, not even uh, uh, on the ability of winter flounder stocks to rebuild. Yeah. Okay, uh, would your intent be that this report, uh, since we've passed the 2014 specifications, that your, uh, this report would be due back to the board at the 2015 specification uh, setting meeting? Um, I think I'd like to, since I think we might need some time to chew on this, I think I'd like to have this back to the board by the annual meeting. Okay. Um, is there a second to the motion? Pat Augustine. Discussion on the motion. David Simpson. Uh, first, um, and maybe Melissa can help, uh, under the Southern New England Mid-Atlantic, uh, there's a reference, uh, section it's page six, there's a reference to the uh, uh, last SARC, I think it's SARC 52, um, that uh, said the SARC predicted that even with a fishing mortality of 0 0.000 from 2012 to 14, there's less than a 1% chance for SSB to rebuild to uh, MSY. Uh, so I think, I think it answers the question already. And of course, we know that unless you stop all fishing in federal and state waters, you're not going to reduce F to zero, uh, that there'll still be considerable discard mortality. Um, and then beyond that, I think if, if this is a a prelude to the commission and the states trying to preempt federal waters, to, uh, federal fisheries management. I just think it's, I think it's misguided. We don't have the authority. Um, we may not like what the feds are doing, but um, they are the federal government and they have preemption authority. And you can't just blockade a, a legitimate fishery that's authorized in federal waters. Uh, thank you, David. Uh, I guess I would comment that um, this clearly doesn't uh, begin any action or, or, or recommend us to take any action. Um, and I think this would be a response to a, an advisory panel that has consistently come with a very clear, strong message. So I think that at least this is a reaction uh, to that message to accumulate some information for us. So I think from that standpoint, um, uh, it, it might be a positive. Terry. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I understand the intent of Doug's motion, but I'm fundamentally opposed to, the, to a moratorium of, of the Federal Waters Fishery altogether. Um, and, uh, um, on, f for a number of reasons, uh, Mark highlighted mo uh, 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 most of them, but what probably bothers me the most about this motion is it's tasking the technical committee without the expertise of the council's plan development team. So if this motion was to move ahead, um, uh, then I would, you know, my request would, if uh, through a friendly, with Doug would be to include the plan development team so we had some expertise for federal waters fisheries because we, if we're going to get a report back to the, to, to the uh, board here, it might as well be f f f fully flushed out. Okay, Tom. The only thing I can remember is when we had the striped bass, when moratorium, Maryland, a few of the states, and the only way that was accomplished is when the, the feds closed the EEZ, which is a conversation for the next meeting. But that was the only way you could enforce the moratorium because the boats that were landing the fish said they were caught in state, uh, federal waters and they brought them into the states that allowed it. So it's a complicated issue. It was a complicated issue back in striped bass. I don't know if we resolved that issue because the only way it was finally resolved when they put the moratorium in the EEZ. So we should delve into those facts before we go off on a train to figure out what happened there and we're, if, the same rules still apply. Okay, Mark. Uh, Dave, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I am also opposed to the motion because I think it's basically uh, premature. I think there's an interim step that we should be taking, which is uh, goes back to the point that Mark Gibson made, which is we should set up a dialogue with the, the I hope this motion fails, and then we move on with tasking, requesting the leadership of the commission to meet with the council and talk about the ways we interact with each other and figure out a more inclusive way of doing that so we link up both of these plans. Thank you. Okay, uh, Doug, briefly. Just briefly, uh, please, uh, members of the board, understand this is not initiating a, any kind of management action. I'm trying to get information on what the impact would be of what the uh, advisory panel's uh, request is. I think it's if before this commission would ever consider any kind of full coastwide moratorium, we need to have the data that would, uh, that would show what the impact would be on all fisheries uh, related to winter flounder. And without that, we can never, from my standpoint, uh, initiate any kind of action um, that would involve something as drastic as a complete moratorium. We need that information. Without that, I don't think we could ever consider it. Okay, Joe, do you need the motion read? Did anybody second this motion? There's no second up there. Pat Augustine, yeah, we're correct. And I, and I wanted to make a suggestion to the maker of the motion that we take out the words uh, moratorium uh, and have it read, move the task to technical committee to determine the impact of landings on landings and possessions in state waters on mortality and the ability of winter fauna stock to rebuild. I thought that would be more in line with what the advisory panel uh, was saying, with the exception they were looking at advising a moratorium. That would, uh, I think, uh, relieve the issues that Mr. Borden made and, and Mr. Foley made. So, uh, I'm sorry, I think it was Tom. But I would suggest to take the word moratorium out. We want to find out what the impact on landings is and mortality. Um, and I, I, my intent with this motion was to address the advisory panel's recommendation because I want this board to see what the impact of taking up their uh, recommendation would be. Okay. Um, Katie, go ahead. Um, I guess just to control expectations on this particular task, number one, the, the previous SARC, as, as Dave Simpson pointed out, did include projections that included a complete, a complete real moratorium in terms of the southern New England stock's ability to rebuild. So I'm not sure if that information has already been covered or provided by the previous assessment. And in the second place, the Gulf of Maine currently does not have a rebuilding target, so I'm not sure how we would measure our, the impact in terms of, of looking to rebuild that stock. Very briefly, Doug. Okay. All right. <clears throat> the motion 
move to task the technical committee to determine the impact of a moratorium on landings and possessions in state waters <clears throat> on mortality and the ability of winter flounder stocks to rebuild motion by mr grout seconded by mr augustine do we need time for caucus <clears throat> seeing none uh those uh <clears throat> in favor show by the uh, right hands please opposed same Abstentions, null votes. Uh, Steve, what are you? Which which category? Uh, abstaining, Mr. Chairman. Okay. <clears throat> Motion fails. Two seven one zero. Um, any other business to come before us? Okay, seeing uh, Tony quickly. A uh, clarification earlier, you all asked that we get justifications for the increases in possession limits from the New England Fishery Management Council, and I just want to confirm that that is a letter that you would like us to send, and David Borden also requested that leadership meet with the council for a more inclusive way to manage the fishery management plan, and I'm need direction if that is something that this board wants us to do or not um, wasn't your suggestion David that that be in a jet or, or was mark that made that suggestion who or, who made this suggestion yeah I, I mean I still think that's that's the next necessary step that we have to take unless somebody objects around this table so is that is that a suggestion for uh, the winter flounder board or in general on all species? No, I, I, personally, I think the leadership of the council needs to explore that issue. In other words, a board could recommend to the leadership of the council or a commission, excuse me, that they explore that. You've got the council chair sitting on the other other side of the room, so he's heard the dialogue, and they could figure out a mechanism on how to do that. You all set with that, Tony? Yes, thank you. Oh, yeah, fi final, uh, final issue. Um, the AP, uh, the last two AP uh, phone calls, um, the attendance has not been great, and we have had no commercial uh, AP members uh, in attendance. So I think the states need to look at their, to look at the attendance, uh, the participants, and to see about uh, getting some people on that uh, you know will participate. David, to them. Actually, to the point before, but on that uh, earlier, uh, but you um, you said that a Connecticut representative was on the call. I wanted to confirm whether that was true or not, and then I wanted to get back to the the letter to the council. I'm not sure. I asked Melissa. It was either Connecticut or Rhode Island. When, I, I can't tell you for sure. Uh, we, uh, staff can provide uh, the the attendance. Okay, because I would like to have and somebody then, active. Um, and I just, you know, in the context of communicating with the the council coordination, I think is a good idea. But I'll just point out that, you know, the they set aside a, a state waters ACL sub ACL of 235 metric tons, and we only landed 52.6. So we have a, a lot of growth room if we wanted to use it in state waters as a commission, but clearly the sense is that's not the direction we want to go. So it might take the form of a more general discussion about coordinating between, um, you know, the New England Council and, and the commission. Um, you know, what different style do we want to adopt, you know, more formally uh, versus what we do with the mid, which is, you know, joint and, and – um, we all know how that works. Any, uh, Terry? Just a <clears throat> closing comment, Mr. Chair. I, I would suggest in, that I work with uh, Bob and Tony, and we, we move this uh, uh, issue that, that uh, Dave Borden had to the next NRCC meeting, which is being scheduled for some time in March. That sounds like a perfect solution. Any, um, any objection to adjourn? Mark? Uh, I was just suggesting in the past it has not been these, uh, the species board that decided this, but you would get some policy board endorsement for that sort of communication between the commission and, and the council. So that's, I don't want to belabor the point in the meeting here, but I thought that was the role of the policy board, and maybe you want to take, I recommend that they take that up. 
Yeah. I, th I think that's a good uh, suggestion, and we can take that. Uh, so recommended. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Thank you. Okay. No objection to adjournment or. The Straight Pass Board 